Thank you so much, Juan. Well, good morning, everybody. Don't you guys love the Christmas season? Isn't it just such an amazing time of year? And I wanna just give a shout out to our team, especially to Daniel and Megan, who really make this place look beautiful. I feel like truly, <laughs> Truly our heart is to make it feel like just a big living room in here with lots of other small living rooms. And we've been in um, some engagement moments here as well. Last Sunday, we had a Harbor at Home Sunday, which was beautiful. We broke off into smaller living rooms, but we're gonna be here until the third weekend in January. So just know that. The only thing that we won't be doing is having a service on December 25th. So don't call us, we'll call you. Can I get an amen? All right, I'm joking, but, but that's where we're gonna take off. We're gonna take some time off as family and just celebrate um, the, Christmas, the Christmas season. So here's what I wanna do today on our first actually official Harbor Advent Sunday, which is Wilson was talking about, is the coming of Jesus. It's Emmanuel coming to be with us. I wanna talk about this concept of wonder in a, in a kind of a, a flow of, of that Christmas song uh, do you hear what I hear? So getting wonder back again with the Lord as we hear his voice in our hearts. So just want to take a few minutes and just talk about that for just a little bit. Now, if we look at the definition of wonder, I'm going to put this up for you. It's to marvel or a cause of astonishment or admiration. So think about that. There's, there's actually an environment, an atmosphere in which wonder um, shows up and, and begins to move on our hearts and make us feel a particular way, to marvel, to cause astonishment, to bring forth admiration to God and to others and to circumstances. It's very, very powerful. The power of wonder is important. We can never lose our wonder as human beings. Come on, somebody. This is so key to even the Advent story. Jesus came to restore wonder again to humanity. But here's what I want to ask today and have us kind of go there for just a little bit. How do we experience wonder in the midst of loss? Now, you may not be in that space today. You may not be going through anything that feels like loss to you. But how do we experience wonder in the midst of loss? Because if you think about the Christmas story and Jesus is coming, he was coming to a people who were in the midst of a great loss and were far from experiencing wonder in their hearts in that season. That's where they were. That's where he found them. They were living, actually the Bible says over the nation of Israel, that they were living under a shadow of death. Can you imagine? That's where they found themselves in the time of Jesus' coming. How I many of you know Jesus shows up in the perfect moments when we need him the most to restore that wonder in our hearts, right? They were under the oppression of a foreign government, so there was political craziness going on. They were under a corrupt temple system, so the place that they were to go to find safety and life was just all broken, right? They were, they were under financial pressure because there was, there was tremendous economic burden at the time, right? So there's all of these facets that were, that were coming against these people in that time, and they had lost their wonder. In some ways, for us as a community, we've experienced some loss recently. In fact, yesterday, Wendy and I and a few of our team um, went and stood with Gabriel Garner, uh, one of our beautiful young daughters of the Lord here at Harbor, who had just lost her father, his, her hero, Derek Garner. Now, Derek Garner, I've come to find out and discover, was an incredible human being, her dad. In fact, he was a running back for Cal in the late 80s, early 90s, and he is infamously known for what's called the play. Does anybody remember this? When Cal was playing Stanford and there was like just a few seconds left in the game, they were down by one, they kicked off to Cal, they received the ball and then time runs out and they begin to lateral the football from one player to the other. And at the end, in fact, the, the band had now run out on the field 
even as the game was ending and when the guy on Cal that actually ended up scoring hit one of the band guys, you guys to look this up on YouTube, it's, it's, it's amazing. He, he runs over one of the band guys, but, but uh, Gabriel's father was the key guy to keep this lateral movement alive. In fact, he had three guys on him. If you watch the video, it's profound. I don't know how he got rid of the football and they say maybe his knee was down. They, you know, everybody on his team said, no, he wasn't. And he, and, he, and he helped bring this winning touchdown into this moment. In fact, he just celebrated 40 years of the play. Every year they have a reunion to remember this magnificent ending to the game. But when I was in this memorial service on Saturday, I was inspired because in the moment of great loss, I felt something different in my heart. There was something about the wonder in the hearts of the believers in the room that day that literally shifted an atmosphere from devastation into hopefulness and anticipation. It was powerful. It was powerful. I can say this, and Wendy could say this as well, my daughter, Megan, some others that were there. There was something about this one I've been to a lot of different funerals, but I felt, my goodness, there's wonder in the room. There's wonder in this room amidst even the loss that is happening here. Why? Because we were able to hear testimony after testimony after testimony of what this man's life meant to other people. Did you know that your life is the voice of God speaking through you in your world where you and what he's doing in and through you and the influence that you have in other people, the favor that he's given you is a song, is a story that Holy Spirit is telling to other people. And the question is, do we hear? Do we hear? Do we hear what he hears? Because hearing God rightly allows us to have access to wonder. You see, there's lots of voices, right? There's lots of voices out there. There's lots of noise that's coming into our ears, into our minds, into our hearts. And what it does, if it's not the voice of God, if it's not the voice of hope and encouragement and beautiful things, it steals from the wonder of our lives, right? And so we need to hear God rightly. Hearing God rightly is what opens up wonder to our hearts. So I love the Christmas story because true, true story went down where there's this massive announcement to the few, right? The shepherds in the fields, the, the wise men that were coming to, to, to honor this king, there's this massive announcement Glory to God, right? We find this in, in Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth and goodwill to men. Now remember again the environment of the nation of Israel, as I already mentioned. And here, God is making this announcement. Peace on earth and goodwill to men. I just wanna look at those words just for a minute because it's important for us to understand. On earth, there is peace. This is the Greek word, Irene. And it's the word for prosperity. And a lot of times we think that prosperity only has to do with financial resources. No, actually, this definition of prosperity is in the form of peace, come on somebody, quietness, rest. Amanda, this is for the word that she just gave by being made one with God again in our hearts. You know, we can lose that oneness out of, out of, out of that intimacy that, 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 that is so destined for us to walk in like every single day of our lives. And there's this, this prosperity, this peace that is coming to his people where we can rest, we can be quiet, we can be made one in our relationship with God again. Well, how does that happen? Well, this is where the whole favor part comes in. Peace on the earth, but it doesn't stop there. Good will to mankind. Men and women, 
young and old, sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, grandparents, right? There is goodwill destined for God to come and visit people here on the earth. Well, goodwill towards men is all about the favor of God over our lives. Now, as I say this, I want you to think about this personally for yourself. Did you know that you are favored by the Father because of Jesus? Favor is this. It's a kindly feeling of approval. Do you know what, do you know what that, how, how powerful that is? How powerful it is to feel approved? To feel supported in life, right? In the good times and in the bad, to feel approved, to feel supported, to feel benevolent interest or concern for a human being. We have all found this in the Lord. So when this announcement is being made, it's sending language into an atmosphere that's gonna, that's gonna change environments by changing the conditions of the human heart. One life at a time. Do you hear what I hear, says the Holy Spirit? Because for 2,000 years, I want you to think about this, the Father, Son, and Holy, Holy Ghost have been communicating in complete and total agreement, peace and prosperity over the earth, where we can be restored to oneness again in, in Him because of what Jesus has done, and favor, a kindly feeling of approval, support, benevolence, interest, and concern. This is accessible to us this morning with whatever we've walked through, whatever we will walk through, whatever we currently are walking through, right? We can stay in this place with the Lord because they are in total unified agreement. Are we there with him is the question. Do we hear what he has to say? What was powerful about this memorial service that struck me was that in each testimony of what Derek Garner meant to each individual that shared is they experienced two things across the board with every single story, peace and favor in their life. So think about that with me. He received that for himself right? This, this, this whole grace of, of being able to hear God rightly, he was able to, to, to receive that for himself where, where he had peace and quietness and rest, and he was at one with God again. There was no separation. There was no delineation between him and the Father, and he was able to receive that for himself, and then he was able to, to take part in the favor where God was caring for him, right, in a specific way. Approval, support, benevolent interest and concern. And so what we receive for ourselves, come on somebody, this is really important. Then we're empowered to give this away to other people. Yeah. And this is massively important. So we're walking out of the, the celebration of life and we actually ran into another lady who comes and attends Harbor and we were talking about another young lady that was, was someone that we lost in the past week. And she was sharing how her interaction with this friend, this, this one that she, she had just come to know, was, 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 was really kind of in her, just kind of the thoughts about the, her couple of interactions with her was really weighing on her. And she told me how in, in two different moments, how this, this individual um, who just lost her life said, hey, I really love you. I really, I really care for you. There's something with, with you and I. And I was thinking about it, I was like, Wow, do we understand the power of the favor of God over us and how that favor could be leveraged for the benefit and blessing of somebody else's life while they're here on this earth, while they're breathing, right? And so God is, I think, setting something up, setting something in motion as wonder is being restored to our hearts again as God is showing his peace 
and his favor over us as we're through the midst of loss coming into a new place with the Lord ourselves and then out of that there's overflow come on everybody say overflow overflow into the other people's lives that are around us do you hear what I hear the sons and the daughters of God are those that are led by his spirit, right? We hear his voice. This is the glory of God. Glory to God in the highest. This is. When we talk about the glory of God, the glory of God is this stuff touching down on the earth and changing environments, changing atmospheres, changing human hearts one person at a time. The word glory is the word doxa, which means honor, approval, support, and benevolent interest, just like I've been speaking about. The coming of Jesus the reason we take time during the entire month of December, every single year, is the coming of Jesus is what set all of this into motion. Do you understand? This separates, you know, following the Lord and Christianity from any other religion that's out there. God came to the earth as a man, as a, as a human being. He clothed himself in flesh. And not only that, he came as a baby, as an infant, vulnerable meek and that very action sets something in to motion jesus talks about this and i'm going to wrap this up in john chapter 17 verse 22 he says the glory which you have given me i have given to them so this whole favor this approval this support this benevolent interest that he received from the father we see this throughout the story of his life now he is given to his disciples and so the glory of God continues, right? It doesn't stop with Jesus, and it doesn't stop with our lives, by the way, as we receive the glory of God and understand that there's peace for us, there is favor for us. It can continue like a mighty wave across the earth and really bring change and transformation. He says, I've, I've given this to them so that they may experience prosperity in the form of peace, quietness, and rest by me being made one with the Father again. That's what Jesus was saying. This is my mission. This is why I've came to come and seek and save the lost. Testimony after testimony of Derek Garner's life. His two brothers, an elderly gentleman in the church, a nephew, a childhood friend, his two sons, all speaking the same thing. What about our lives? What will be said of us when we draw our final breath and people come to remember and to celebrate? I'm going to have the band come back up. I think it's a moment in the life of the bride where wonder is about to explode on the inside of us again. Interestingly enough, I guess Savannah and Megan had gotten in some conversation about butterflies, and I don't want to you know, share too too much of Megan's own story, but she was saying about how, wow, she didn't realize how, how difficult and challenging a process of, as it was for, uh, what do they call the pre-butterfly? I don't know. Sorry, what's a pre? Your pre-butterfly and then your butterfly, right? Okay, Chrysalis, Wendy says, she's probably right because she's one of the smartest people in the room. It's true. Um, so anyhow, but there's this transition, right, from one form from worm to butterfly right from caterpillar to butterfly and it's and it's a very tumultuous kind of experience there's like a, a lot of loss that, that's going on in that moment 
And then, but yet then there's beauty. Life is precious, life is fragile, but life is beautiful. There's all kinds of mystery to this thing called following God, but there should be wonder in the midst of the mystery, wonder in the midst of the questioning. And when people walk into a room that's filled with people of faith, they should experience another type of environment than they experience outside of this place. And there should be a stirring on the inside that maybe looks like a quietness of our heart, a stillness of our heart, a peace that surpasses all understanding and guards us in our hearts and our minds through whatever we're walking through. And there should be, in that moment, a favor where we experience the honor of God over our hearts as those created in His image. And we sense His approval and His support and His benevolent interest in our hearts. If you could just, before the Lord, if you could just Close your eyes for just a minute because I feel that throughout this room, God is wanting to restore wonder again, just like he did to the nation of Israel. One life. Can you imagine being that shepherd in the field and seeing these angels show up and them making this announcement? Can you imagine being those wise men traveled thousands of miles and to see that promised child given to the earth so that prosperity could come so that we could be restored to the father Let's just lift up a song here just as we close and then we're going to just make a little room for Holy Spirit to come and just cultivate wonder in the inside of you today. I love you, Lord.
around us you envelop us Lord in you we live and we move and we have our very being God our every breath
the food we eat, Lord. intricately involved in your life way more than you know it I want to invite you just to come come to the front just sit before the Lord we're going to close our time with just 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 reverence and honor for this moment and if you have to go get your children which if you could do that now that would be helpful just do so quietly come back into the room because I believe there's moments that God gives us Advent is a reminder of an accessible moment that we have, not just now, but always. And he wants you to see it. He wants you to hear what he's saying. He's close, closer than the breath. God bless. We're going to just take some time love on people here at the front and if you want to come down again please otherwise god bless you guys we'll see you next sunday